a show where a nerd fits in the Riley and Kimmy show. Thank you for checking out 426. We have a couple of things to uh, really uh, talk about here on this episode. One of the things we're going to do is a shout out to uh, one of our old friends. And I don't mean he's old. No, I mean an old near and dear friend uh, to the Riley and Kimmy show who needs all our help. And I mean, if you are a nerd, especially if you love Superman, you will want to listen up with this one uh, because you could be a superhero and in your own way, you you could be helping a character from the Superman mythos. Yes, and who's that? Well, I'll give you that in just a moment. I, you know who it is. I know you? who it is. Are you sure, Kimmy? I know who it is. You do know. I know. Who it is. You, I know. You know. I know. Yeah. And he, you could say he is a friend of the Riley and Kimmy show. Could you not? Absolutely. That's right. And we'll be getting to that in just a few moments. Now, one of the things I think is really cool, Kimmy, uh, is a new course that's about to happen yes a new course that's about to happen in the world of superheroes comicbook.com reports stan lee and michael uslin will be teaching a new online course rise of superheroes and their impact on pop culture and it's presented by the smithsonian institute via edx now this is kind of a really interesting thing especially uh, to me because i am well aware who michael uslin is now i know you have heard me mention his name before have you not mm-hmm. now should i triv- should i do a trivia thing here who is he why is he important to the world of comic books and superheroes ooh yes Ooh. It's a familiar name. Oh, I'm sure it is. It is, especially if you've been watching any Batman movie since 1989. It is a familiar name. Any Batman cartoon since 1989, it's a familiar name. Big time familiar name because Michael Uslan owns the film rights to Batman, secured those back, I think, in, I'm gonna, let's just say right after or right around the time the Superman movie with Christopher Reeve came to being. Uh, he purchased it for an unknown amount of money. He was a, a big time comic book geek, and I'll give you just an idea how big of a comic book geek. Uh, when he was a kid, by the time he got to college, he had acquired over 30 thousand comic books in his parents garage all neatly stored Mm. over some estimates are like 50 to 60 Mm thousand he had in his collection at one time the second issue of batman Mm -hmm. my understanding in near mint condition Mm. also the first superman comic book Mm -hmm. not action comics number one but the first superman title uh comic book in near mint condition Mm -hmm. and i know he had at one time the uh silver age launch of all dc and marvel meaning the launch of flash the launch of the justice league yeah with starro on it he had uh you know all those the green lantern all the the relaunches of the silver age he had all the marvel ones the fan he had fantastic four number one he picked it up as a kid as by default because uh he saw this odd-looking, orange-looking rock creature on the cover. Mm-hmm. And it was the thing. Mm. And he bought multiple copies of these as a kid. One to read, one to store. Mm-hmm. And this this a collection just grew and grew and grew. And he loves Batman, though. That is like his you know big-time favorite thing is Batman. Back in uh, 2011... This is why the name should be important to you, Kimmy, or you should have been able to recall it. He wrote his autobiography called The Boy Who Loved Batman, Mm -hmm. which I do have in the library here in the Batcave. And I recommend this book for any fan of Batman because he goes into details. He goes into the history. He goes into all the offshoots of Batman. He deals with what's really cool is the Bob Kane Bill Finger thing. You know, uh, how possibly Bob Kane gave Bill the finger mm-hmm. and, and he deals with that uh, it deals with you know the Batman TV series the cartoons the movie serials it is just it's designed for the Batman freak and mm-hmm. I love that book and I highly recommend it we have a link to the book right on our website just to, in case you want to find it uh, you can go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com for that now he is best known as a producer of all the modern Batman films to date, starting with Tim Burton's 1989 film and continuing to the upcoming Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, also including various feature-length films based on Batman, the animated series, and other 
incarnations of Batman. Now, as a film and TV producer, in addition to his many DC comic film credits, in addition to all Batman films and the two Swamp Thing films, Uslan was executive producer of the Swamp Thing TV series, 2004's Catwoman, and 2008's The Spirit Film. And by the way, which is kind of interesting, is long before he did that, The Spirit Film, he wrote Spirit comic books. Hmm. I, and he also wrote other comic books, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he uh, Very young, okay? I mean, we're talking like college age. Mm-hmm. He got into into that. Now, Uslan is also a producer on the new, in production, Captain Marvel Shazam movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Mm. So this guy is kind of really tied and really big. Now, Uslan attempted his first comic book writing in 1975 at DC Comics with a version of The Shadow, which I have that in our collection. We have that uh, issue. I remember picking it up when I was real little because uh, that's really what got me into The Shadow and I started reading the Pulp Fiction of The Shadow from way before then and listening to the old time radio shows and stuff like that. But he is to blame. Mm. He, he did it. That's right. And by the way, he is planning a feature film with Sam Ram. Is it Rami or Ramy? I believe it's Ramy. Okay. That guy. He's planning a feature film of the shadow they're doing the shadow reboot yes there was a shadow movie in modern era Mm -hmm. yes there was one way way back in in his movie serials and stuff but i'm talking there was a one uh you know in the modern era and can kimmy tell me who played the shadow and his street identity uh alec baldwin that's right alec baldwin played that and can you tell me what the shadow's secret identity is? Uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't do it. Lamont Cranston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and by the way, Jonathan Winters played in that movie. He played the uh, chief of police or the police commissioner. Do you remember that? Oh. Yeah, can you tell me who played the uh, love interest? Oh, Penelope Ann Miller? How did you do that? Because I can only think of her maybe in two movies. One was that, and the other one, can you think of the other uh, one? I'm Carlito's thinking? Way. Yeah, you know, and then she just kind of vanished uh-huh. you know, off planet Earth. Yeah. Maybe we'll see her at a convention. Hey, our fellow uh, show promoters, there's one to try to find. No, Kimmy's going, no, don't. Don't mind her. <laughs> Le- leave her where, wherever she went. That's what you're saying, aren't you? Mm, yeah. yeah. You're saying leave her where... Uh, no, come on. Are you telling me if she was sitting at a card table... At some little convention, you wouldn't go up to her? Nah. Oh, wow. Okay, my friends who are show promoters, uh, Kimmy Kimmy gives a thumbs down, so just kind of ignore that part. Now, with this new course that Michael Uslan's doing, by the way, he did teaching way back, uh, I believe it was at Indiana, uh, Indiana University. Uh, when he was a graduate student, he came up with the idea for a comic book course, mm-hmm. and the university did it. Hmm. And so this is this thing he's doing now with Stan Lee is really not that new, if mm-hmm. you will. Now, students will study different perspectives of history and cultural influences of the superhero genre. Now, that's during its rise from comic books to a dominant place in pop culture. Learners who sign up for and earn a verified certificate in the course will receive a certificate featuring original artwork with both Stan Lee's and Michael Uslan's signature. Man, this is so freaking cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm, man, mm-hmm. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you could actually get a degree in panology. Now you're going to say, "What the hell's that?" Back when I, uh, I mean, when I was a like teenager, or right, you know, right where you're getting to be a teenager, I used to tell people, "I'm a panologist," because that's what they called a comic book collector at one time. Oh, I mean, really, you know, the real, you know, uh-huh. real like really nerdy, nerdy ones. You know, you don't even hear that anymore. You know, so I'm a panologist. I just kind of like that. Uh-huh. You know, uh, hello, I'm here to pick up something for my penology. <laughs> you know, I'm going to the penology store. I like that. Hey, you know, instead of uh, smash comics, smash penology. What do you okay. think? What do you think? Uh, no? nah. Nerd tropolis penology. Nah. It, it doesn't work for you. Mm, no. You, you don't think so? No. Nah. I, okay, well, it was just an idea. But anyhow, that we have more information about that course, which I would love to take. Just for the fun of it, uh, you can find more right on our website, which is what, Kimmy? RileyandKimmy.com. Now, Kimmy, it is time. Well, I tell you what, we're, we'll just wait a second before we do that. I, I think we, we need to talk about something else before we uh, reveal who the uh, special friend is to the Riley and Kimmy show. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, I've been asked 
about comic books just recently. I've been asked about an upcoming comic book show that is happening in Jacksonville, Florida. And over here is my comic book collection. Feel free to browse. There's a box of disposable reading gloves on the nightstand. Well, yeah, I tell you what. The comic book collection that you can find in Jacksonville, Florida is going to be, it's going to be very big. And this is a very good show, I'm told, by multiple individuals, big-time collectors, like my friend uh, at uh, Nerdtropolis. Okay. In Ormond Beach, Florida, Taylor recommends this show. Now, I've been to the show way back when. I can't remember. I, at least five years ago, I think, in Orlando. It was very impressive. Picked up some things there. And now, going to Jacksonville. Now, th this show is the CBC, the comic book and toy show. And the really cool thing about Joe, the promoter, uh, he he has this event all over the state, mm -hmm. almost like one a month. And I mean, he will be coming to Daytona Beach. He will be coming to Orlando in the next few months. But he's up in Jacksonville, and our very good friend, Ed from Pop Culture Retrorama said, Patrick, are you going to get into the Batcave with Kimmy and head up to Jacksonville to... Uh, this really cool show and I said yeah, I, I have to talk to Kimmy and Kimmy gave me the big thumbs up and I guess we're going and this is a really cool show it's happening Saturday March 7th and Sunday March 8th at the Ramada Inn in Jacksonville and that is 9150 Bay Meadows Road in Jacksonville Florida we have uh, the link to that right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com now this event Kimmy specializes in thousands of silver age to present comics Shrink wrap sets, 50 cent and $1 boxes, and hundreds of toys. I remember one of the things that one of his shows, now we've seen him also set up at uh, oh, either Mayhem and, or uh, Spooky Empire, uh, either their, their May show or their fall show. Uh, or maybe it was Conjure. I take that back. Uh, oh, yeah, I think so. I think it was Conjure, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry sorry about that, Joe. I think it was Conjure. And I mean, I literally. And that's a smaller show he was set up at, mm -hmm. okay? And I lost a lot of time in a good way just going through his boxes. And uh, the staff individuals he had were very friendly and very helpful because I was looking for something by Marv Wolfman, uh, a Tomb of Dracula-specific uh, issue. And they actually hunted down. I mean, they, they have tons of comic books. I mean, they are, and they have them wrapped, and they have them graded and everything right there for you. And they actually found it for me. And they went out of the way, and we and and then we carried on a good nerd conversation. So they can help you out, and so it's something to check out. And by the way, to give you an idea just how big of a comic book kind of show this is, a quote from their Facebook page. Are you ready for this, Kimmy? Mm -hmm. Here it is. Quote: Hey everyone, packing up the old Freightliner. By the way, Kimmy has no clue what a Freightliner is, do you? Mm -mm. It's a semi truck. Oh, yeah, my. I have an older relative, 20 years plus older than me, who, by the way, is having a birthday the day this is uploaded. Hey, happy birthday, older relative. <laughs> I'd like to, like to give you a, a big uh, big shout out there. Anyhow, he drove a Freightliner. He drove other types of uh, trucks, too, but for a long period of semis. But for a long period of time, he drove a Freightliner across the nation, so I know exactly what that is. Well, anyway, back to the quote. Packing up the old Freightliner to leave in the morning. To tell the truth, it takes a few days to load up as much stuff that we take to our CBC comic book and toy shows. That is why it takes eight to ten hours to set up the show. Whoa. It all depends on the size of the show. Jacksonville and Orlando are our biggest shows. They can take up to 12 hours to set up. Yikes. Now, we know some vendors at shows, because we do shows, you know, we set up ourselves. <laughs> we, we, we don't take that long. And <laughs> Anyhow, we have a very, very good friend, uh, Jim, from uh, Carousel's Collectibles in Deland. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I ever hear him mumbling, because he complains about us, how fast it takes us to set up. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes him, I think, two to three hours. Uh-huh maybe to set up i'm gonna say <laughs> yeah you better uh check out joe because joe takes oh up to 12 hours mm -hmm. can you imagine that we doggy oh that that'd be a lot of fun wouldn't it there yes sir <laughs> i feel sorry for the person carrying in all those boxes of comic books now mm -hmm. i hope he has invested in something like we did and that is a cart <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it it does help a little bit does it not gibby oh yeah yes it does now kimmy i think it is time for us to talk about one of our super friends in the great hall of the justice league there are assembled the world's four greatest heroes created from the cosmic legends of the universe Yes, Kimmy, 
on episode 426. It's time for us to talk about one of our our friends, a true super friend to the Riley and Kimmy show who needs all of our help. And that person, I'm going to let him introduce himself here. Let's go right to the Riley and Kimmy studio phone lines. Hello. Hey, Riley and Kimmy. This is David, the commissioner, calling from Smash Comics and Games in Sanford. As uh, as you may know, I've briefly run into the spot of bad luck with my health. Uh, I went into the emergency room for an infection in my foot, and I had uh, septic blood, and they also found a uh, heart problem with a clot in my heart. So after spending nearly a month in the hospital, I get home to find out that my roommate, uh, who shall not be named, <laughs> is moving out in uh, five days, which actually turned out to be two. So with no notice. So I sort of got stranded here uh, with double the bills and a lot of hospital money running in. Uh, and uh, at the moment, not being able to go to work, no income to pay for it. So I've already eaten through my savings. So I put a GoFundMe up on, on the Internet by asking for donations. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a proud person. I don't usually like to ask for help, but right now I certainly need it. So uh, I believe uh, the Riley and Kimmy show has a link to my GoFundMe on the page um, that you can go check out. And if you uh, can do anything to help out, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much, and thank you, uh, Riley and Kimmy. Keep up the good shows. Bye-bye. Well, thank you, David, and it deeply saddens us to know that uh, what you, you're going through and what you are experiencing, um, mm-hmm. we know it's difficult for you, um, and I, I'm going to say some things here that he can't, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, David has done so much charity work uh, through his comic book store and through other uh, events that he's been tied to for a long period of time. He has, he has really donated so much time and, and help. And he's helped also struggling artists and uh, mm-hmm. individuals who love comic books. And he's a person who, you, if you're a nerd, you you find a friend with David. He you 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 just fit right in uh, mm-hmm. around him. And uh, he's very intelligent, uh, very compassionate, uh, uh, just uh, you know a, a brother from another mother for me. Yeah. Um. It's it, I mean seriously. It's in ways uh, we have parallel things growing up and. Uh, I mean, this hurts me to know that he's going through this. And if you are a fan, if you are a fan of Superman, mm-hmm. you will want to help out David. Now, the reason is, is David, as you heard him refer to as commissioner. Well, David's full name, I don't think he mentioned it there in the uh, phone call, is David Corporone. Mm-hmm. Yes, as in commissioner David Corporone of Metropolis. That's a fictional character, an ally of Superman that appears in comic books published by DC Comics. Now, the character first appeared in Superman number four, February 2012, and was created by whom, Kimmy? George Perez. That's right. Now, the character, however fictional, is based on the real person who we just heard call in. Yes, because he is best friends with George and has known him for many years. Now, David, the the real person, the one we just heard, Mm -hmm. is the co-owner of Smash Comics and Games in Seminole Town Shopping Center in Sanford, Florida. Now, in the Superman mythos, that David is, well, basically our David, Mm -hmm. the David we know, uh, because George did base it on. Matter of fact, even looks like David, does does he not? Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest things, I don't think, I'll, I'll see where I have it. I do have it somewhere in my archives is I was at Megacon 2012, and I'll never forget this day. David and I are running around, and we're with other other friends of Smash Comics, and we're, we're, we're taking pictures with cosplayers and stuff and making it part of Smash's Facebook page. And I'm basically Jimmy Olsen that day. I'm taking photos and, and meeting so many cool people. But we go by George's booth. And George is, you know, uh, doing signatures and things and, and commission work. And George sees David and, you know, uh, George just lights up. And I'm running a video camera just for some odd reason. At that moment, it wasn't on purpose, right? I was actually doing a crowd walkthrough because it was kind of packed, right? Mm-hmm. And David is right next to me and George stops what he's doing mm-hmm. and, and goes behind the table for a second and comes out with a sketch of the commissioner 
just like in the comic book. Mm -hmm. And he signed and signed it and gave it to David. And mm -hmm. David has used that as his profile page uh, picture on Facebook many times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I saw tears coming in David's face. Yeah, right that was such a cool moment. Yes. And I am so happy. And also, <laughs> I mean, it's the same day, I think. Well, we all spent three days together. Uh, I think it was that day, maybe a few hours later. I and I think he went on behalf of George. I'm not not for George, but through one of George's contacts. Mm -hmm. David was a proxy bidder on some very high end comic books. The reason he was chosen is because he understood comic books and it was comic book art. Okay, mm -hmm. that was done customized art uh, for an auction for uh, the Heroes Initiative, mm -hmm. and I am sitting there. With him, and he's bidding on like a John Romita Jr. art is an example, and they're getting into the thousands of dollars. It's not David's money. Is somebody he was a proxy. Mm -hmm. Somebody. Th th I want to give people an idea. That's how trusted he is, mm -hmm. and he was doing this for charity. Yeah, and I'm next to him, you know, video recording this thing, and it's one of the coolest things on earth. Seeing this beautiful artwork being taken, you know, down the hallway and let, being shown by, uh, you know, example a great a great cosplayer who's doing Wonder Woman, somebody doing Supergirl, you know, and just this gorgeous artwork. And, you know, here's my friend right next to me, my brother from another mother, uh, going, uh, I'll bid $2,000. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he looks at me, he goes, it ain't my money. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and that was, you know, and, it, and he gets into one of those bidding because he had a, like an amount he could go up to. And one of them, I think, was close to $4,000 mm -hmm. that this person authorized him to bid to, up to. And it's just a really cool moment. And this, that's how fun of a guy this is. Every year he does Toys for Tots campaigns at Smash Comics, which we have been a part of. You know, he, he invites cosplayers. He does birthday parties. I mean, the, the list goes, goes, goes on and on and on. He helps out Heroes Initiative. Mm -hmm. But he right now needs our help. And by the way, I can't forget this. I don't mean to embarrass him anymore because he, you know, he is rather shy. David. <laughs> I'm kidding about that. He's actually in a current comic book as well, too. He is a character in George's Sirens comic books. Oh, yeah. And I suggest mm -hmm. picking up Sirens, by the way, since, you know, the day this is uploaded is what, Kimmy? Comic book day. That's new, right. New comic book day. That's right. So, you know, if you are in the Central Florida area, head over to Smash Comics and get maybe a Sirens issue. I believe they have all of them up to now. I think it's issue three is what George was just released last week. And by the way, you'll find David in uh, issue one, I'm sure. And uh, you, you, I know he's in issue one. And you'll find him eh, maybe in some others. Okay. I don't mm -hmm. want to spoil it. Mm -hmm. And also, if you happen to be over in the Daytona Beach area, go to Nerdtropolis Comics. Uh, stop on by there. And mm -hmm. if he's all sold out of sirens, you just go, hey, uh, you know, uh, can you order that for me? And I know Taylor will do that. Or you can say, hey, I want to get this Superman 4 back issue and all those that David's in, uh, he can find those too for you. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll do that. But r back to this, David does need our help. He needs your help. And just go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com and the GoFundMe page is right there and all the information of, you know, how you can help. And, you know, every amount helps it's sort of like raindrops you realize you know even a dollar is a raindrop right mm -hmm. and raindrops add make, up well they make floods that's right you don't have a flood without that's raindrops right. so that's right. let's give david a flood <laughs> right i and i mean a flood yeah and he's I'm, a special he's a special person and he's put a smile on a lot of people's faces for a long time and and now it's our turn to return that Yes. You know, give that back to him. And, you know, as I said, any amount will help. Mm -hmm. And if you have, even if you have friends who don't even know David or not even in Central Florida, this guy, you know, he matters. He, he you know, and if you like George, mm -hmm. now George would probably slap me for this. No, he wouldn't really. Cause George is one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. But, you know, if you like George, David and George are buddies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is somebody who's part of Superman. David is. Mm -hmm. So if you like. He's got a wiki page. He's kind of. Yeah. He's got a Wikipedia page. That's right. And, you know, he's part of the Superman mythos. Let's help him. You know, let's just help him. He he needs it. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing I can say is, you know, I just I I I can't believe we're at this stage where we that he needs this. Uh, you know, it just, it caught me off guard. Yeah, yeah, and and he's not one really to come out and ask for any anything. So, no, no. Um, so, you know, it's our turn to give back. That's he's, right. He's, he's a great person. So go right to our website, RileyandKimmy dot com, and you can find out more about David's GoFundMe page. 
This is a job for Superman. Up, up, and away! Yes, it is a job for Superman, and the reason it is is because David is the biggest, the largest Superman fan on planet Earth that I know. He has one of the, uh, he just does, I mean, one of the largest passions, one of the biggest passions that I've ever met of anybody. I mean, he just loves Superman. Mm -hmm. All versions of Superman. Mm -hmm. Especially the Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, the Superboy and Super... Yeah, he, I mean, he just... And, and, he, you know... Once he bounces back and he's in Smash Comics, you just walk up there and start doing Superman trivia with him. He, he will love you. Mm -hmm. Okay, You know, the guy can name every version of Kryptonite there is, and there are so many different colors of Kryptonite and what they do, and he can tell you what they do. He loves Superman mm -hmm. that much. And that's one of the reasons I like him. Okay? And just one of the many reasons. Anyhow, being that passionate about Superman, I thought what we would do is do something for David here. And I thought we'd go back in time to old time radio, the golden age of radio, to the adventures of Superman. And we're making this an episode for David. We're sending this out to him. We're, this is a tribute to David. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do now is go back. Can we get this almost right to the date? I mean, as we upload this, almost right to the date. The episode we are going to make part of the Riley and Kimmy show is from March 8th, 1940. Wow. Now, Kimmy, can you tell me how many years that's been? Ooh, Here let me go. count on my fingers and toes. That's okay. 60. She's an alien. She's got a lot of 75 toes. years? Yes! Woo! Kim, woo! Kimmy could count. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, woo! I'm surprised from the, the school district that you went to that you're able to count that high. I know. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Anyhow, we're going almost 75 years back in time to March 8th, 1940, to The Adventures of Superman. The episode's called North Star Mining Company. And we're about to hear the voice of Superman, the, the voice to me, and also of Clark Kent, that is Bud Collier. I love this dude. He did Superman in so many different types of uh, versions. He did it for the radio show and also did it in the uh, cartoons in the 40s and was brought out of retirement back in the 1960s, 1966 for Filmation's New Adventures of Superman cartoon, which played for decades on CBS television, especially on Saturday mornings. Let's go back in time. March 8th, 1940. Here's the Adventures of Superman on the Riley and Kimmy Show. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. <laughs> Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> and now, Superman. When we last saw Clark Kent, he was in the midst of a baffling mystery. Waiting at the hospital to interview the girl he had saved in the nick of time from a burning building, he had heard a scream. Two men, posing as the girl's relatives, had visited her room, stabbed her, and suddenly vanished. Today, as our story continues, some time has passed. The girl's injury proved not to be serious, and she is now well enough to give Clark Kent his interview, though nervous and upset. As her story approaches its climax, she becomes more and more excited. Listen. Mr. Kent, when I woke up here in the hospital, the first thing I saw, the very first thing, were those two faces bending over my bed, Bartley Pemberton and Joseph Deneen. They're the ones who tried to kill you? But they're the head officers of the North Star Mining Company. Of course they are. Don't you understand? Mr. Kent, I was their office secretary. About two months ago, I found out what they were doing. Mr. Kent, they weren't honest. They were swindlers. They sold people stock in a mine out west, a mine with no gold in it. Go on, Miss Anderson. If you're not too tired... I want you to know what happened. I found some letters and some secret diagrams and maps. And then came the morning of the fire. Yes? Go on. I got down to the office early that morning and began going through his desk. I was in his office all alone. I knew I had at least an hour before he got in. I stood there, opening and shutting drawers. And all the time, I didn't have any idea that there was somebody watching him from the closet. Have you, by any chance, been investigating the activities of the North Star Mine, Miss Anderson? Have you? All right. Since you've caught me, yes, I have. You've caught me, and I've caught you, you swindlers. Why, you Hold little... it, Joe. Now, look here, girl. What do you mean by calling us swindlers? You realize you can go to jail for that? Jail? You're a fine pair to be talking about jail. That's where you're going. I've got written proof. Oh, no, that's a lie, Miss Anderson. You have no proof. No? What about that letter you wrote a month ago to Barker out west? What about the crooked figures? 
What about those records you were looking for just last week? Well, what about them? I have them, that's all. Uh-huh. Every single one of them. Where are they? Where you'll never find them, Joseph Deneen. Never in the world. Not you or anybody else. Are you sure of that, Miss Anderson? Mr. Deneen and I are very clever at finding things. You'll never find these papers. I'm the only one in the world who knows where they are. The only one, huh? Well, how fortunate. All right, grab her, Joe. Yeah. She's told us all we need to know. Get away. Don't you dare. Go on, go on, yell. There's nobody here. There won't be for another half hour. And by that time, by that time, Miss Anderson, we'll be gone. Gone for good, and you'll still be here. Go on, Joe, catch her. Tie her up. Here, wait a minute. I'll give you a hand. Well, I guess I was a fool, all right, Mr. Kent. I just didn't stop to think. I shouldn't have told him I was the only person who knew. Oh, Miss Anderson, those papers, why were they so anxious to keep anyone from finding them? Mr. Kent... I don't know. It must be something more than just proof of the swindle. Miss Anderson, where did you hide them? What did you do with those maps and diagrams? My brother. He's the captain of a freight steamer in the Madison. Yes? I gave him all the papers in a package and told him to put them in the ship's safe. And that's where they are now? Does your brother know what they are? No. I didn't tell him. Oh, Mr. Kent, I can just see those two faces... Bending over me. I can't stand it. Here, here. Please, Miss Anderson, don't. Look, here comes the nurse. Uh, Mr. Kent, I just heard from an orderly. Those men came in a car. A car? What kind of a car? A big black sedan, yes? licensed 2406. 2406. So long, Miss Anderson. Where are you going? To find that car. Thanks, nurse. Mr. Kent, it's still at the parking lot. They left it there. Fine, that makes it easier. See you later. 2406. Well, if that isn't a break, I never heard one. Ah, here's the parking lot. And there's the car. Down. Down. Now to see what I can find. Maybe an address, records, something to tell where they are. Ah, locked. I've got to get in. Hope nobody's looking. Now then, I'll just take a door off. That'll be quickest. Once more. Now into the glove compartment. Oh, nothing. Nothing but guns. Two pistols. Well, Superman can take care of those. Hey, hey, what's that guy doing? What? Look. Oh, they've seen me. Got to get out of here. He's wrecked the car. He's torn the door off. Get him. Catch him. Yes, come on. Run after him, man. Just get a hold of him. Sorry, boys. Can't stay. Got to get back to my paper and write up this story as Clark Kent. In a hideout near the waterfront, Bartley Pemberton and Joseph Deneen stare grimly at the black type that tells so much and is so silent on the one thing they want most to know, whether their ex-secretary, June Anderson, has turned the incriminating papers over to the police. Pemberton decides to visit the Daily Planet office and learn what he can. Disguised as Dr. Ambrose, an investor in the North Star Mining Company, he pays a call on Clark Kent. Hey there, Kent. Somebody wants to see you. Huh? All right. Who is he? Right this way. That's Mr. Kent. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Kent, Mr. Clark Kent, who wrote the story on the North Star Mine. Yes, I'm Clark Kent. Hmm. What can I do for you? Uh, won't you sit down? Uh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Kent, I'm a medical man, Dr. Ambrose, and Dr. every Ambrose? penny I possess is invested in the North Star Mining Company. Oh, say, I'm terribly sorry, Doctor. Oh, Mr. Kent, you don't mean that. I'm afraid that. I do. Those fellows, Pemberton and Deneen, were out-and-out confidence men. Swindlers. What? They were? Why, the crooks, the rascals. I'm I... sorry about your savings, Doctor. Mr. Kent, my loss is not half so serious as the fact that men like that are still at large. Well, don't worry. They won't be long. Oh, you'll catch them? You have the proof? Not yet, but we will have. Not yet? I, I don't understand. If you haven't the proof now, where is it? Oh, Kent. Kent, man, I, I've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, I... I'm sorry I didn't see you were busy. Oh, Mr. White, I just got in. Uh, This is Dr. Ambrose. He invested in the North Star Mine. Mr. White, Doctor. Uh, How do you do, Doctor? How do you do? Yes, I should say I did invest. Uh, It was great work on your part, Kent. I just got a call from the district attorney's office. What did they say? They checked the girl's story, and it's true. She has got a brother who's the captain of a tramp steamer, and she did give him the package of papers just before he sailed. Well, bless me, you don't mean it. Yes, isn't that something, Doctor? Uh, Where's the tramp steamer heading for, Mr. White? Well, they asked us not to print it. But she's the Madison, running south from here to Charleston. The, uh, Madison, hey? When will it arrive in Charleston? Well, the day after tomorrow. In the minute she docks, one of the DA's men will step aboard and pick up the package. 
I guess that'll put those crooks behind the bars all right when they're caught. Uh Yes, indeed, Mr. Editor, when they're caught. Well, uh, I'll not keep on disturbing you, gentlemen. Don't say no. I didn't mean to interrupt you and Kent. If there's anything you want to know, Dr. Ambrose... Not a thing, Mr. Kent. I'll just run along. Uh, My business, you know, it's it's been a pleasure, a real pleasure. Well, if you're sure there's nothing I can tell you... No, no, nothing whatever. You told me all there is to tell. Well... Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Real pleasure. Well, what do you make of him, Kent? I can't imagine, Mr. White. He's probably worried stiff over his money. Mm, You can't blame him for that. No. Now, where are you going? Back up to the hospital. There's a whole lot more of that story. I want to talk to that Anderson girl again. See you later, Mr. White. And you say you've heard from your brother? I had a wireless message. Uh Uh-huh. The papers are all right, and he'll turn them over to the police when he docks at Charleston. Well, now all we have to do is find Deneen and Pemberton. I'll feel safer when they're caught. (laughs) You and an old doctor that called on me a while ago said he'd invested heavily in the North Star Mining Company. Poor man. What was his name? Why, uh, Ambrose. Dr. Ambrose. I don't recall any investor by that name. And all the time I was talking to Mr. White about the Madison, the doctor just stood there biting his lips and tapping his index finger on the desk as though... What? Well, what's the matter, Miss Anderson? What did you say he did? Bit his lips and tap with his finger? Why, yes. What's so odd about that? Nothing. Only... Mr. Kent, this old doctor, do you remember how tall he was? Uh, sure. About... Oh, half a head shorter than I am. And did his eyebrows meet in front in a straight line? Why, yes, they did. Mr. Kent... The finger that he tapped with. Was there a scar on the knuckle? Did you notice that? Miss Anderson, you know him? Who was he? Oh, can't you guess, Mr. Kent? It was Bartley Pemberton, president of the North Star Mining Company. And now he knows. Bartley Pemberton? Well, Miss Anderson, what if he does know? Oh, don't you see? Don't you understand? He wants those papers. He'll do anything to get them. He'll take a plane or a fast oh, boat. No, He'll catch no. a steamer. Oh, He'll sure kill my brother. Oh, now we're really getting somewhere. Take a boat, will he? And catch the steamer and kill the captain. I think not, Pemberton. Not this time, and not while Superman is around. Ah, there's Sandy Hook. You've got a good start, Pemberton, but you'll need it. Faster, faster! Is that the Madison? That big hulk up there ahead? That's her, boss. Go on up with her in good shape. Watch out for this wave. Bart, what are you going to do? Hoist distress signals, shoot off a rocket, get that captain to take us aboard. Then what? Well, then we'll see. But whatever happens, we've got to have those papers. So make sure nobody else does. Stand by, Joe. Here comes more water. All right, sailor, let go of the rockets. Signal that freighter to heave to. Give her the whistle. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> What will happen on board the Madison when Pemberton and Deneen demand the papers from Captain Anderson's safe? And when Superman comes streaking down from the northern sky in hot pursuit? Tune in next time and follow the story. Tune in with us next time and follow the exciting transcription, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Superman!